Kanye West because uh, you know why not? Um, Kanye West gave an interview with um, Zayn Lowe. He's yet to drop Jesus King album. So Kanye West has done a few things that have been questionable over the last few years. I'd say or last couple of years. Um, I've got I've gotten to a point where I've been able to separate the artist from the art, um, from the art from the artist. Right. Um, I've kind of done that in all my life anyway with everyone I've kind of looked up to. And I think in general, because I've just been exposed to, you know, different intellectuals, I've kind of read different books, I've watched documentaries, I've gone to conferences, I've gone to talks. I've just surrounded myself with other forms of um, motivation, inspiration, information, insight, guidance and mentorship from afar. I don't necessarily go to Kanye for all of my, for all of that sort of stuff. So it kind of, if anything, because I've been exposed to so much of that stuff, it's made whatever I hear Kanye say sound really incoherent and stupid. Now, that's not to say that I wasn't also part of the bandwagon that was, you know, jacking him off when, you know, when he was talking about fashion and stuff, because I was, right? I was part of that that group because at that era, especially when he was going through all the drama he was going through to get Yeezy um, where it needs to be at now, I kind of saw that battle as something quite honourable, right? Something quite important for the culture. For the scene in general, for all us creatives out there, for all us wannabe creatives, because it was like he was fighting against a machine. He got he peered behind the curtain. He realized that the only way to get his brand or his company to a level of perfection or the level of production quality to Stella McCartney, all these kind of people, was to partner up with one of the big conglomerates, right? Caring and LVMH, all the others. There's the only way to get forward because they've got a monopoly. They've got like a, a, a vice-like grip on all the best factories, all the best manufacturing, all the best materials. So the only way to do it is to kind of partner up with a company or to kind of get favor of those of those groups. Um, and he was kind of wailing about it because he realized that, you know, these mediocre, quote unquote, um, designers or artists are getting away with murder because they just got the keys to the best production plant. But do they have the, don't necessarily have the best ideas? <sighs> so that fight was cool. On a, that I was I was well for it. I was on it. And he was talking, you know, he was quite lucid. He seemed very cognitive. He seemed very aware. But then over time, I don't know, he's gone down a weird path. Um, maybe it was triggered because of his um, support with Trump and the kind of backlash he received in it was a bit was a bit harsh. Um, it also maybe was something very surprising because, you know, if you're a narcissist or you're a, a sociopath like Kanye, you probably don't think, you probably have a very skewed uh, impression of your own, of how you're perceived. So I think it was probably the first time he really noticed that the people that he thinks will always ride for him don't really ride for him. I think even when he did the Taylor Swift stuff, he was kind of aware that, you know, hip hop was rooting for him when he did whatever else he did that's questionable. People were, you know, hip hop was generally aware for him. But the moment he started siding with Trump, it seemed like hip hop in general, the industry, especially people behind the scenes, kind of distanced themselves from him and kind of, you know, put the brakes in that relationship or just let it be known that he's not their guy anymore, especially in an era where every entertainer or celebrity has turned into like a, a politician or an activist on social media. Um, he probably saw, he, he was very, probably taken aback by, it. oh my God, shit, I'm on my own completely, right? Coupled that with the fact that Virgil completely, you know, went to the moon and back um, with his appointment to Louis Vuitton. Um, the fact that he doesn't really hang out with any other of those kind of dudes that are part of that scene. I've, ne I've not seen him, I've not seen a picture of Kanye with um, Don C in fucking years. I'm not sure if that's a thing, if they're talking or not. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, obviously, falling out with Drake was a big thing. So he's gone through quite a lot of stuff, but I've just tended to kind of push, take it, you know, just keep it at arm's length and kind of do my own thing. Um, I don't necessarily listen to the music anymore. I think Kids See Ghost was pretty cool. The gay album was trash, completely. I skipped through it and just kind of, you know, binned it for the most part. But I'm not really looking forward to Kanye Abbott, especially even more so now he's on his Jesus tip or his Jesus um, era flex. I'm just not with it whatsoever. I have a very fraught and fractious relationship with the church. I have grew up in it. I went through a few, you know, weird times in the church, stuff that I don't really want to repeat. Um, or I don't really want to, you know, kind of expound on in that regard, but just really troubling times. I'm not really a fan of, especially black churches, of how they exploit um, the weak, um, how they prey upon people who have no other option. It happens a lot in Africa, especially, you know, the prosperity message is something that kind of grips um, loads of members of my family because they don't have anything and they can't see a way out. And when somebody comes on a pulpit dressed well with a gold watch and a big car and tells you, you know, give me this money or do this and do that. And then you're suddenly going to get what you want in life. It seems like the way to go, isn't it? It brings you solace. It brings you peace. But in general, you're getting exploited by these people right, who look like you, which is the other thing that really drives me crazy. But in general, I'm just I'm just I abhor it. And especially in in context in context too abhorrent because i think a lot of people say oh kanye says these stupid things but a lot of these fans be like oh man you, you gotta see his comment in context cool but you also have to see his actions in context right because i always think to myself like what would have happened if the whole trump thing and the whole 400 years of slavery 
and all that sort of stuff. What happened if all those comments got, went down well? What happens if he didn't get any backlash? Would he have corrected course? Would he have um, gone down? Would he have corrected course, quote unquote, and gone down the church route? I don't think he would have. I think he panicked. I think he was crazed, as as he probably mentioned. He went to um, he went to a mental institute. I think he would have he would have went down that way. Um, I think he would have not gone to church if people would have been game or been okay with him standing next to Trump and saying that, hey, this guy's like my dad and all this sort of... No, again, no one cares if you like Trump or not. But the way it kind of unraveled just showed that he wasn't very cognitive of himself. Or no, he was very aware of his kind of influence and power. And he was just basically goading people with a hat and stuff. He was, you know, remember that comedy meant about, oh, don't let me get the hat out again, right? Um, like he gave the box of hats to Ryan Fest, but now he's threatening in this interview again with Zane Lowe to bring the hats back out again and saying the hats are part of a practical joke. It's just essentially... He's taking the piss out of his fans. Um, he's essentially got to a point where it looks like to me, I think as he mentioned it quite a few times, that like Yeezy is a billion dollar company. I think he's got to a point where he's got he fuck you money and he's really flexing. He's finally been, he's finally realized that, because you remember there was an interview with The Breakfast Club where Kanye was talking a lot about financial wealth and independence and having money and money and money. And, kind of, and then I think Shireman was like, why do you keep talking about money for? This isn't the Kanye that I know. You're obsessed with money. But, I think what Kanye realized once he tapped into the Kardashians was that the Kardashians in some some respects, again, not to link this with Kanye, but because they're probably they're separate entities, but the Kardashians in some respect probably showed Kanye West just how important it is to have fuck you money, just how important it is to have um, to be in, to be in charge of your own future, just how important it is to be the captain of your own ship. Because over the years, they've done loads of questionable things, things that people have tried to cancel them over, have tried to kind of end their quote unquote social, quote unquote, to try to, there are loads of things that people have done, they've done in general as a family, the Kardashians, that people don't really like. But nothing seems to stick. If you're not fan, if you're not fan of them, nothing, nothing they do that's questionable seems to kind of, you know, uh, derail their path to, you know, just. Cashing in, cashing in, cashing in. Every year, it just go up and up and up and up and up and up in terms of bank account or in terms of what they can do with their money, in terms of influence, in terms of, in terms of cultural influence and in terms of brand partnerships, all that sort of stuff. So I think Kanye finally got to that point where he realized that now with Yeezy being valued at a billion dollar company, you can probably dispute that. I dispute that. I'm not too sure how real that figure is, but if you go to any much polar city and you look around the streets, sorry, you look down on what people are wearing, you'll see Yeezys everywhere. Mum, dad, kid, hype beast non-hype beast everyone's wearing them so that probably has some sort of validity to it but again whether or not it could all come through the trainers is hard to do that just through footwear but you know it could probably happen especially through such a limited range of foot of foot, footwear options but you know who am i to argue this but i think he's finally got that money and he's seen that oh wow i can say what the fuck i want and these none of these guys can touch me because i think a lot of people also out there apart from the kanye there's a lot more i think it's fair to say that if you're a billion dollar if you're a billion dollar valued sneaker company it probably has more to do with the sneakers being good than it has to do with people being fans of Kanye. I don't think there's a lot of people out there. I think there's a lot of people out there. If you saw them wearing Yeezys and you looked in their phone and checked their Spotify, checked their iTunes, they probably haven't listened to a Kanye West track in probably a couple of years or in a year and a half. Maybe some, you know what I mean? I don't think necessarily all Yeezy fans are Kanye fans. So a lot of people out there have realized they want to separate the art from the artist. So Kanye's probably felt that and realized that he's very, you know, he's very intuitive in that way, emotionally. So he's probably wilding out because of that, right? Maybe I don't know, but I just think in general, for the fans that are still sticking around, it must it must fucking suck, isn't it? Like this is a video or an article from High Snobiety, and it details his performance that he did at LA at the Forum, where he kind of did a whole weird listening party thing that a lot of artists do nowadays that gets on my nerves. They go to an, they, it, I, I get the whole listening party thing. I get the whole like a focus group, right? Intimate crowd. I think it probably works best when it's like a small concentrated crowd of influencers and stuff. Like I, I think that might have been, what was it? Same, was it, was it Yeezus? When they did that, right? When all, when, it, when they got like all like um, Lucas Sabat and all those guys to go to some hotel bar somewhere and they were playing the music, right? That, that works pretty well. I think that's a really cool and way to kind of get your music viral, right? You have all those cool kind of influencer guys, Bloody Osiris, Lucas Sabat, um, you know, um, ASAP Nas, all these kind of guys um, at your listing party and they're kind of live streaming your, perf- sorry, they're kind of, um, yeah, IG living your kind of session and then people are clipping those clips and putting it up on YouTube and stuff or sharing them again on social and Twitter and stuff. That works really well, but playing an entire album that no one's heard of gospel raps to a, a stadium full of kids that... All they know, all they want to hear is fucking, you know, stuff from Jesus and 
I don't know, my beautiful Dutch is fantasy is a bit strange. I never really got that. It's like when second even in the concert, why do people play why do people play unreleased songs at concerts? Like it just completely kills the vibe. I, I never really understood that in my respect. But anyway, what do I know? So this whole article about his event at Forum Las Vegas. Um the vinyl itself looks pretty cool. I like it's a blue vinyl. Again, the albums are out. The funny thing about this whole rollout is that the merch came out, the interview with um Zay Lowe came out of him speaking for two hours, just talking absolute shit. But the album itself hasn't come out yet. So this kind of again lends it lends itself to the idea of like what what how can you be a fan of Kanye? Like he's got an album full of gospel raps, right? It's only ten tracks. It's not like he's you know he's going on like he's fucking designing I don't know um, the Starship, right? The SpaceX Starship with Elon Musk. He's not doing that, right? He's design he's fucking putting together an album, and it's and it's an album of 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 probably tunes some of which were meant to be on the Yandy album that have been now remastered, edited, and kind of you know, chopped and changed to kind of fit in with his new perspective on life and his new kind of religious quest because he can't rap about some of the stuff he did previously. But it's just insane that the album's still not out yet. It's like a 10-track album. Like, really, how hard is it to get that out? It's like, you felt you you missed one drum drop date and it's the second drop date you're going to miss again. It's like, insane. So yeah, but um, I like the lanyard. This, um, the I think the actual rollout itself is quite cool. Going into a stadium, and do, even though I'm not a fan of it, um, going to a stadium and doing this whole thing is pretty cool. Um, the lanyard of the actual vinyl looks amazing. He had a, what is this? He had like an installation artist do this weird grass thing. That was pretty cool. Um, you can check that video, little, little video there. There's like a grass installation there that people are standing in, which is insane, right? That was pretty interesting. Someone got Kanye's hat. All these kids here, like, you know, begging for Kanye to sign their merch. Which is weird. And again, this is visually, as optics-wise, this is quite interesting, right? It's Jesus is king. He's hoping to bring people through to Christianity or get them rele- or get them saved like he's saved. But all these kids are worshipping Kanye. They're not worshipping God. They're not worshipping Jesus. They're worshipping Kanye. Kanye is the one that they care about. They don't care about the Jesus stuff. They just want to get next to Kanye and get the bit of that stardust on them. That's all they care about, which is funny, isn't it? Like, it's like, what did you expect, man? That... Celebrity is going to far out like it's never going to be in balance at all. But again, what do I know? Um, it continues. Some more pictures of people at the event. Some great little videos and stuff you can check out yourself. But the most interesting part of it is the interview with Zayn Lowe. Now, don't get me wrong. I haven't watched the whole thing. I've probably watched about 20 minutes of it. It's quite hard to get through it because, again, I'm a big Kanye fan. And to see he, see where he's at now at the moment, uh, mentally, to see where he's at now as a person, it just kind of it just kind of makes me sad that he's turned into this dude. Um, again, your artist, you're not going to be, always be a fan of your artist the whole the rest of your life, but you're going to, I guess it's, this is a natural progression, you know? Um, and again, like I mentioned before, he's hip hop to Morrissey. Hip hop never had a Morrissey yet. I don't think such a divisive figure. I think indie fans or fans of um, quote unquote white people music have a lot of these personalities in there. People who are quite, you know, questionable, questionable human beings, but they make fucking great art. And Kanye is probably the first in the hip hop industry in that regard, right? Universally, you could play, you know, a Kanye West track for most people. And they would, they would know at least one or two of his tracks. So, you know, he's universally loved. But unfortunately for some of us who were fans of him when he was a fearless leader of the creatives, has now turned into like a Bible thumping, you know, born again Christian. You're like, oh, man. But again, people have what people are, you know, they're allowed to do what they can do. Um, you know, fame isn't a prison. Artists are allowed to grow and evolve into the people that they want to become. Cool. And it's up to you as a fan to decide if you want to jump on that, kind of continue that journey. No problem with me. But the interview itself is just like insane. Some of the quotes, right? So this is from the wrap up. There's some tidbits of this interview that he's given with Zayla. I'm not going to play it because it's probably going to get uh, flagged or whatever, but I'll play some other bits and pieces that I found. But here's some choice quotes, right, from the interview that kind of just left me a bit, you know, speechless, to say the least. Um, let's go here. So this is from the wrap up, right? Their, their um, Twitter page. It's got some quotes here from the Kanye West interview. So scroll down and see them from the bottom and go right up, right? Uh, <laughs> number one, right? Number one tweet here that, that they've mentioned is that Kanye said the following. I was literally out there trying to have my daughter outdress Rihanna. Which again, is out of context. We don't know what he's talking about, but it's just nuts, right? Now, nutty comment, number one. Number two, I thought I was a god of culture, but really, subculture was my god. Okay, cool. So that means he was essentially trying to, you know, get north to dress you know better than rihanna um and which meant he was obsessing and over materialism over culture in general this is something that we're aware of it's not that big of a deal cool it moves on uh, kanye says he didn't make any money off his uh Yeezus tour which is interesting we don't really care about that um kanye on social media people are addicted to it it's the modern day cigarettes whatever kanye on running his present 2024 
um, we're working on some things right now. Like, what is he actually trying to run for to be president? That is insane. But again, it's not it's not out of bounds or between you know what Kanye thinks of himself. And if he if he tell Kanye he can't do something, he's gonna do it. I think we saw with a hat. The moment people started telling him not to wear the hat, he wore it even more. So it's just one of those things. You just have, the more it's kind of like a child. You have to ignore him for a bit, and then you just stop doing it because no one's giving him any attention. So you know, we we'll see. It. And also, you never know. Twenty twenty four is a long way away, right? He could. He could have a metamorphosis and change again to another person, and then suddenly he becomes someone everyone loves again. We don't know. Kanye says the following: Kanye says he now owns his own masters. We're happy for him from that. Another quote: He says, "Kanye, I'm unquestionably, undoubtedly, the greatest human artist of all time. It's just that fact." Cool. That's again. Is that at odds with his new Christian perspective? Um, should he more? Should he? Be, should he be more humble? I don't know. Whatever it may be, he might argue that some of the biggest preachers in the world, you know, drive Lexuses and flying. No, or drive fucking Maybachs and Ro- Man, Lexus is not people on it. Drive Ro- Rolls Royces and Maybachs and fly in private jets. So probably him having confidence in his own ability isn't that far off from those kind of actions. I'm not too sure. Maybe a false equivalency. I don't know. Uh, Kanye says on Drake, um, I go to Drake's house. I walk over there with no security and leave my phone number. He's here's my cell. I'm not trying to ring the bell. I'm not trying to ring the bell. It's like. The, the Drake thing, we know for sure, looking from the outside in, that Drake is done with Kanye, right? I think a lot of people in the industry are done with Kanye for the fact that you don't really see them hanging around with him too much. You don't see them retweeting his stuff. Um, all the hangers on that have kind of joined him so far are the ones that have kind of um, co opted the whole Yeezy um, design studio thing and want to job that way. And again, if you want to be part of his CV, if you want to get him on your CV, it's probably a good look to get other jobs. So kids are just trying to forego all the madness he's saying and just kind of trying to work in the studio intern, get that experience and then bounce. The people that are also begging, it looks like from the outside in, look like people that are trying to join the gospel crier and be part of that. Um, so you can get musically next to him that way because you know maybe it was harder to get in touch with Kanye when he was going, when he was in full Yeezus, full My Beautiful Talk, Twisted Mode because he was only, only hitting up the best of the best to kind of make his albums amazing. So that probably works out. And all the all the other people that I mentioned previously are the Don C's and all the other guys and the and the IBM Jespers. I'm not seeing them around Kanye in fucking yonks, right? It's only these new kind of, you know, um, hangers on that are kind of now trying to get some Kanye stardust on them. But then another thing that made, it, made, made me wonder this was when I watched a video. So there's a video here on the Team Kanye daily Twitter page that kind of is, again, a bit distressing because you see Kanye and he looks... He just looks nuts. Do you know what I mean? Like, and what he's saying is nuts as well. So there's a couple of videos here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, da, 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 da. Video number one. Let's see if he says anything nutty in here. So this is number one video, right? On there. Let's see if it's anything too bad. I don't think it is, but let's see if it is. Let's go back. That I'm in service to Christ. Mm-hmm. My job is to spread the gospel. I'm no longer a slave. I'm a son now, a son of God. <laughs> Do you guys really buy this? Is anyone buying any of this? Like, honestly, like, this is such a, like, it's amazing, bro. Honestly, if that Trump thing would have worked, right, and somehow in a parallel universe, he says what he says about Trump, he says all the 400 years of slavery thing, and Van Leef, instead of getting up and chastising him, says, oh, my God, I'm so thankful you spoke the truth, you spoke power into truth, or whatever, right? Like, if it went the way he wanted it to go, would he have done this? Would he have gone down this whole spirituality route? He probably wouldn't have done this. He would be standing on a convention uh uh stage with trump now pumping his fist in the air and fucking performing uh jesus walks or something that's what you'd be doing isn't it? he wouldn't be on this path of like redemption and forgiveness and you know um healing and spirituality he wouldn't be doing this this is obviously a play to make sure he can he holds on to his base which is essentially you know the black audience but the black audience seem like they're done with him i think so for the most part i don't know whether or not you guys think the same thing but i wouldn't want any kanye juice on me whatsoever outside of the whole artistic side of it just in terms of as a person he's just going through too much now at the moment he's going through too much and again maybe is it irresponsible for me to sit down to kanye and interview him now as well whereas he's going through this stuff like i don't even know if he's of sane mind but that being said um a lot of people criticize zane low for having the most softball low bar low brow sort of like you know you know doesn't really push back to on his on his guests kind of in the same vein as they kind of push back to in this, the same way people say like he plays the fence like a phil defranco or like a Dave Rubin in the interviews. I also think this is the reason why they're important because when it comes to interviewing like people who are eccentric, like Kanye, you need a Zane Lowe person there to interview him because once you have like, if you have an Ebro or a Charlemagne, people with outsized egos who want to insert themselves in a conversation, this conversation, this, this interview is going to go off the rails in two seconds. You need to have, you need to have a, 
You need to have a Zane Lowe who's just going to sit there and be like, wow, man, that's crazy. Oh, real interesting. You know what I mean? You need to have someone like that who's just going like, to let him speak and just, you know, and also be at ease and be at peace because you know Zane Lowe's not going to try and have a gotcha moment. It'd be interesting to see if Charlemagne does end up interviewing him too, actually. Would Charlemagne do that? I don't know. Um, nowadays, maybe he's more aware of how this whole mark, this whole mental health marketing thing is kind of looking for him. I don't know. I wonder if he'll do it. Let's continue this video. I'm free. But this shows you that God is hilarious. Why? Liberals love art, mm -hmm. right? And now I am unquestionably, undoubtedly, the greatest human artist of all time. It's just a fact, right? So to put a red hat on was like God's uh, practical joke right. on all liberals. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. And, yeah! and that's why it hurt. Not And that's why it hurts so much. <laughs> you are held up as this person who continues to provide us. But those, but those liberals, those liberals never. No, fans, man, fans. We we are the same human beings. We are gods, and that man versus machine is. So he says liberals uh, were freaking out. Like that's a, that's not even a funny joke. But I think Zayn did a good pushback there. How can you say one way? In one sense, you're calling lib them liberals. You're trying to like ostracize them as these people. But they are your fans. Your fans were disappointed in you for siding with Trump because they don't like Trump. So again, like his lack of understanding and perspective, and again, it's very worrying. But you know. People of people of um, heightened notoriety and popularity have this thing in them. It's just a common thing. Maybe it's a detachment from society. It kind of makes you like that. But he's just lacking in self awareness. Uh, you know, in its own, which is you know whatever it is. But if you're a fan of Kanye, watching this must make you a bit bummed out, really. You know what I mean? Um, continues another video here too. What do you say here? They try to discriminate against my mind and my thoughts <laughs> because of that moment. Kobe Bryant has won five championships. His story isn't pulling an Achilles. The same press, they wanna make the conversation always be about mental health. They're trying to kill the superhero. <laughs> so I'm here to show that someone that's diagnosed can still drive and be I don't think anyone, again, he's just, just pointing out the obvious. Who, who, who thinks that someone has a mental breakdown they can't come back from it? We love a redemption, we love a redemption, a redemption story. Um, Racks of Riches, um, the Phoenix Re-Rising, um, The Hero's Journey, Joseph Campbell, Big Up. We, we love that story in society. I don't know why he's making it seem as if like people are writing him off because he had a mental breakdown. If anything, people are writing him off because he said wacky shit, had a mental breakdown. Um, he was said that he was seeking clarity had another said that more wacky shit has now gone to Christianity and now is saying even more wacky shit. He's just continually saying dumb things and he's dumbfounded that people are reacting weird oddly or reacting negatively to the dumb things that he's saying. It's again, it's just such a warped way of looking at stuff. Like he's just completely only looking at it from his own point of view, which again is his superpower because that's Kanye West. But for a fan, it must bum you out. Um, let's so you see one more clip here. California, building my domes mm. and they said my dome was 10 feet too high <laughs> right that makes so if you're looking through the story Kanye made these domes these um these um prototypes of homes that he was intending to build on his own pro on his own land in order to kind of you know it's his kind of idea of rehousing people in disaffected areas or just providing alternative means of housing you can read into it google it you'll find it and essentially, um, the local planning office in LA told him to tear them down because they didn't they weren't up to spec that's it, right? Now, again, you can read into it what you want to read into it. He mentions here that the they told him it was 10 feet too high. He had to tear it down and that the story was leaked to the press. And now he's looking at it like some conspiracy theory, right? They leaked it to the press so that he had no choice but to tear it down because he was kind of forced to and it was, you know, embarrassed. I don't know, whatever it may be. But if you look at the story in isolation, just kind of break it down for what it is. He had his own property. He had his own land. But he didn't even bother to find out what the building regulations were before he built his dome. He just built it and then he realized and then he was told it was too high to tear it down. Cool. But he's now taking that as some sort of symbolism as to why people are trying to block his mind. Like his mind is so high above everyone else. Again, this is somebody that doesn't read, right? He specifically says he doesn't read. He's not informed. He rabbits or parrots the views of others around him in order to kind of 
um, and then tr- and tries to kind of filter it through his own perspective in order to kind of form his own opinion. He's not informed, right? He suddenly woke up whenever when the whole cultural war was going on and left me right. He suddenly saw this stuff was going on and just inserted himself into it. No one asked for his opinion on anything that was happening, right? He inserted himself into it. Had some incredibly horrible takes or the the takes that the majority of the audience wouldn't of his audience wouldn't be susceptible to, and he was not prepared for the backlash. Again, like how can you imagine being imagine being as smart or as um um or as looking like as smart as you are as Kanye, right? And not having it, and not thinking ten ten steps ahead, not as not assuming that. Imagine you're Kanye, you're sitting and you're like, you know, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna start backing Trump. How can it not pass your brain that some of your fans might not think that's a good, might be against your backing of Trump, of what he represents, of who he is, or the part your backs, whatever your thinking is. I don't really give a shit because I'm not American. It's not my stuff to get involved in. But imagine not thinking about that, having that playing that scenario in your head about your fans maybe freaking out and not being fans and not being down with that um your family your wife your friends um the industry in general just imagine not having that because that's the reason why a lot of people say there's not there's probably more conservative people in hollywood than we know because really hollywood for the most part is leans quite to the left and and a lot of actresses and actors and movie directors and producers don't want to declare their let's say don't want to declare what side they are on the party line because they don't want it to impact on their ability to land a job, essentially, right? To book a next gig. So people just stay quiet and keep the politics behind closed doors. Or if you're in if you're in the in crowd in LA, you'll hear around the party scene and shit like that. You'll know that, you know, some people lean this way politics wise. You'd be surprised who these people are. I hear a lot through in podcasts, like read between lines, there are a lot more conservative people in Hollywood than you think, but no one wants to come and say it because they don't want to get cancelled. Imagine being Kanye, just assuming that people are just going to be receptive to what you say and just take it on a grain of salt. Mate. You, that, you, you're, you're not that important. Like, I don't understand why you'd think that you would be immune to getting some level of criticism from people. Like, and, and the fact that he didn't even think about it and didn't plan, didn't have a kind of a coherent argument in place, right? A coherent counter argument, some facts and figures, um, just something in place to kind of respond to that backlash just shows just how reckless he was with his, with his kind of influence, I'll say, with maybe... Um, how careless he was with his fans' emotions and feelings, maybe in that regard as well. Like just dismissing of it. Like, no, this is my path I'm on, and if, if you're a fan of me, you're just gonna you're just gonna back me anyway, regardless. It's like that, that's not how it works, man. You should know that more than anyone, right? Um, yeah, it's just a strange one. They tore it down. That kind of semantic. But think about what they're saying, mm. Kanye. Your dome is mm. too high. Yeah, they're saying it's too high because it's too high. Just build it in spec, like. <laughs> so. They came to me and said, <laughs> this guy's nuts. You have to tear it down. But before I even had the opportunity, now, mind you, this is on my own 300 acre property. Mm. Before I had the opportunity, they already went to press with it. But we all know that, in, especially in America, um, what you call real estate, prop- your land isn't even your land. You're still playing fucking, what's that? There's, there's a tax you have to pay, even when you buy your own land or you buy your own house or building. Like, you still have to pay something to Uncle Sam. It's not necessarily technically yours to do whatever you want with it. There's still some, you still have to abide by some rules and regulations. Anyone that's watched Grand Designs will know this. Like, it's not as if you can build, as long as you buy a plot of land, you can make something, what, you, can, you can make your building look like whatever. It has to fit within the environment. There's buildings, there's building regulations, there's stuff that you have to kind of put in place just the way it is. And he's looking at that as some kind of, um, what you call it example of how people are treating him in terms of his political views and shit like what again man it gives me a headache to listen to it i'm gonna stop it for there because again the hours passed now and i got head off to work um but yeah that's kanye west man the album still hasn't come out so again i'm not sure if you're a fan and this is what you want from kanye but i'm off that train i buy the shoes i buy the clothing um i keep abreast with how he's um conducting his uh or just how the business is running in terms of Yeezy, right? In terms of the marketing approach, in terms of the design process. Um, that's cool, quite cool. It's Especially if you're a graphic designer, it's quite interesting to kind of follow the people that are working in the Yeezy design studio because they sometimes post up some interesting tidbits and whatever. There's a really cool video actually of some, some Russian dude who's part of the Yeezy design product team who kind of showed, he did a presentation somewhere in Russia for a university. You can't really understand if you don't listen to understand Russian, but he presented loads of prototypes of stuff that are working. That's really interesting. But apart from that, when it comes to him, his views politically or about social political issues, I don't care. When it comes to his music, I'll pass. Because again, he's number one, he's getting more money in other areas. So I don't think he's putting his all into his music and it's not the best 
product we're going to get. It's obviously better when he's presenting it to, when other people are presenting his 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 artistry for him in Pusha T's album, right? Good example, but to listen to gospel raps from Kanye in 2019, nah, there's too much music out there to do that to myself. I can't do that. I just can't. I 